Midwestern Industries offers a full line of replacement parts for end tension vibrating equipment. This video will demonstrate how to properly change bearings on a Midwestern Industries MEV screener. Before changing bearings, be sure to follow your company's lockout tagout procedures. Step 1. Raise the drive side of the bearing shaft. Support the drive end of the shaft with a wooden block cut from a 2x4 approximately 5 inches in length. Step 2. Place two 5 8 inch 11 studs at 2 o'clock and 10 o'clock position on both sides of the MEV side sheet. Step 3. Slide bearing onto the non-drive side of the shaft. Step 4. Slide bearing cap onto the shaft and place against the bearing housing. Step 5. Hand tighten bearing cap bolts into the bearing housing. Rotate grease line hookup to approximately the 8 o'clock position. This video illustrates a right-hand drive MEV. If your MEV is a left-hand drive, the grease fitting locations will have opposite placement than what has been illustrated in this video. Step 6. Raise the shaft so the top bearing holes line up with the 5 8 inch 11 studs and push the bearing housing against the MEV side sheet. Step 7. Coat each 5 8 inch bearing housing bolt with Never Seize Lubricating Compound. Hand screw bolts with two-piece camlock washers installed on each bolt into MEV side sheet. Be sure that all bolts are started properly. Cross-threading of bolts could occur if shaft is not raised into proper position while tightening bolts. Step 8. Slide bearing onto the drive side of the shaft. Step 9. Raise the drive side of the shaft and remove wooden block. Step 10. Rotate grease line hookup to approximately the 4 o'clock position. This video illustrates a right-hand drive MEV. If your MEV is a left-hand drive, the grease fitting locations will have opposite placement than what has been illustrated in this video. Raise the shaft so the top bearing holes line up with the 5 8 inch 11 studs and push the bearing against the MEV side sheet. Step 11. Slide bearing cap onto the shaft and place against the bearing housing. Step 12. Hand tighten bolts into the bearing housing. Step 13. Coat each 5 8 inch bearing housing bolt with Never Seize Lubricating Compound. Hand screw bolts with two-piece camlock washers installed on each bolt into MEV side sheet. Be sure that all bolts are started properly. Cross-threading of bolts could occur if shaft is not raised into proper position while tightening bolts. Step 14. Tighten bearing housing bolts using a 15-16 inch socket and ratchet in the numbered order shown. Step 15. Tighten bearing housing bolts using a 15-16 inch socket and ratchet in the numbered order shown. Step 16. Lightly lubricate dust seals before placing them on the shaft. Step 17. Slide dust seal onto the shaft Lip side first and place tight against the bearing cap. Repeat for drive side of MEV. Step 18. Use a 9 16 inch socket and ratchet to tighten the bearing cap bolts in the numbered order shown. Using a torque wrench, torque the 3 8 inch bearing cap bolts to 35 foot pounds. Repeat for non drive side of MEV. Step 19. Using a manual torque wrench, Torque the bearing bolts on each bearing housing to 170 foot-pounds in the numbered order shown. Once completed, check to make sure that each bolt is torqued properly. Step 20. Before installing the grease line on the non-drive side of the unit, be sure to purge all of the old grease from the line. Tighten both ends of the grease line using a 3 8 inch wrench. Step 21. Before installing the grease line on the drive side of the unit, be sure to purge all of the old grease from the line. Tighten both ends of the grease line using a 3 8 inch wrench. Step 22. When installing the base weight on the non-drive side of the unit, first measure the distance from the bearing cap to the middle of the groove in the shaft. Next, place the base weight on the end of the shaft. Step 23. 
slide the base weight toward the bearing cap until it reaches the measured distance from step 22. Tighten the set screw on the right side of the base weight all the way down until it's tight and then loosen it slightly. Step 24. Move the base weight back and forth slightly to find the center of the groove in the shaft. Once in place, insert the weight key into the keyway with the dot side facing outward and the set screw hole facing up. The weight key should sit flush with the base weight. Step 25. Use a hex wrench to tighten down the set screw at the top of the base weight, making sure it seats in the set screw hole of the weight key. Next, firmly tighten the set screw on the right side of the base weight using extra leverage on the hex wrench. Lastly, firmly tighten the set screw on the top of the base weight using extra leverage on the hex wrench. Step 26. Install the base weight on drive side of the unit by first placing the base weight on the end of the shaft. Step 27. Insert the weight key into the keyway with the dot side facing outward and the set screw hole facing up. Step 28. Measure the distance from the bearing cap to the middle of the groove in the shaft. Step 29. Slide the base weight toward the bearing cap until it reaches the measured distance from step 28. Use a hex wrench to tighten down the set screw on the right side and then loosen it slightly. Move the base weight back and forth slightly to find the center of the groove in the shaft and then tighten the top set screw making sure it seats in the set screw hole of the weight key. Step 30. Firmly tighten the set screw on the right side of the base weight using extra leverage on the hex wrench. Lastly. Firmly tighten the set screw on the top of the base weight using extra leverage on the hex wrench. Step 31. Thoroughly clean the drive side of the shaft before installing the shiv and bushing. Step 32. Place the shiv on the drive side of the shaft. Step 33. Slide the bushing onto the shaft until it is flush with the end of the shaft. Make sure that the set screw hole is facing upward and centered over the key slot in the shaft. If the bushing is too tight to move, insert a small flathead screwdriver into the split at the bottom of the bushing. This will allow you to move the bushing into the correct position for installation. Pull the shiv flush against the rear of the bushing. Step 34. Insert the bushing key into the keyway and tap it lightly until it is flush with the end of the shaft and the bushing. Step 35. Use a hex key to tighten down the set screw on the top of the bushing. Use extra leverage on the hex key to firmly tighten the set screw against the bushing key. Step 36. Align the holes of the shiv with the holes of the bushing. Insert and start the screws by hand and tighten them using a 9 16 inch socket wrench. Make sure that the split at the bottom of the bushing is still flush. Tighten all three bolts into the shiv evenly, making sure the shiv is straight. Step 37. Install drive side weight covers with Midwestern Industries ink lettering facing outwards. Line up bolt holes and start bolts by hand. Use a 9 16 inch socket wrench to tighten bolts. Step 38. Install non-drive side weight cover with Midwestern Industries ink lettering facing outwards. Line up bolt holes and start bolts by hand. Use a 9 16 inch socket wrench to tighten bolts. Step 39. When installing belts, make sure the motor shiv is aligned with the unit shiv. When tensioning belts, make sure belts are tightened at 1 inch deflection at 5 pounds for proper tensioning. Over-tensioning the belts will result in reduced bearing life. Tighten the bolts located on the motor mount when the belt is set to the proper tension to assure the belts do not loosen while the MEV is running. Install the belt guard, then tighten the bolts and replace the belt guard access covers. For additional information or questions, please contact Midwestern Industries at 877 for sizing. Visit our website at midwesternind.com or email us directly at sales at midwesternind.com.